Many of us have fantasized about being part of a powerful family like the British royal family, expecting the royals to live a life like in a Disney cartoon. But the reality is far from it. Royal life isn't always a shared one. There's one royal figure who's been getting a lot of attention lately, and not all of it is positive. That's Queen Camilla, now Queen Consort to King Charles and a former princess. Everyone from members of the royal family to the public and the media seem to agree. Camilla's no good. Why do people dislike her? Let's dig in and find out. And do you know the legend of Queen Camilla? Leave an A in the comments if you do. Early life of Queen Camilla. First, let's take a look at the background of the current British Queen before we get into the nitty gritty, formerly known as Camilla Rosemary Shand. The current Queen Camilla was born in July 1947 at King's College Hospital in London. Plumpton, East Sussex, was their country home, and South Kensington, London, was their city home. The family split their time between the two. Her father, Major Bruce Shand, retired from the British Army to become a successful businessman, and her mother, Rosalind Cubitt, was the third daughter of Baron Ashcombe. Annabel Elliot and Mark Shand were Camilla's sisters. Alice Keppel, her mother's great grandmother, was famous for being the mistress of King Edward VII. In Furl, Sam Camilla was baptized at St. Peter's Church in East Sussex on the 1st November 1947. It was Rosalind's lifelong commitment to charity work that inspired Camilla to do the same. Near their home in Sussex, Rosalind helped, in the 1960s and 1970s, at the Chaley Heritage Foundation, an organization that helps disabled children, son, and Vidler. It is said that Camilla's father often read aloud to her as a child, which sparked her love of reading. She also had early exposure to horse riding at pony club studs and grew up in a household with many pets, including cats and dogs. She was known to have won many prizes at local gymnastics competitions. Many have drawn parallels between Camilla's youth and that of Enid Blyton, according to biographer Giles Brandreth. However, it is rumored that Camilla's childhood was much more than that. Brandreth notes that the Shand family was quite upper class. In contrast to Blyton's stories, which focused on middle class teenagers, although Camilla shares some of the traits of George in The Famous Five, this remains the case. They are said to have had servants to help with housework, gardening, and childcare indicating their high social standing. The family's hosting of events, such as providing the lawn for the local Conservative Party's summer festival, was seen as a sign of their status. According to legend, Camilla was enrolled at the co-educational Dumbrell School in the village of Ditchling when she was five. Near her family home in London, she started attending Queen's Gate School when she was ten. Her classmates at Queen's Gate reportedly knew her as Mila. Lynn Ripley, who sang with Twinkle, once said that she had a strange charisma, confidence, and a strong inner life. Penelope Fitzgerald, a French instructor, recalled her as being full of life and energy. Because her parents did not want her to continue for A-levels, Camilla only had one O-level when she left school in 1964. Montfortil, finishing school in Tolochinaz, Switzerland had been sent there by the time she was 16 years old. Following her completion of the degree, she spent six months at the University of London Institute in Paris studying French and French literature. In 1965, Camilla was one of 311 debutantes who entered society on March 25th. She reportedly lived with her friend Jane Wyndham, who was the niece of the famous decorator Nancy Lancaster, in a modest Kensington apartment when she left her family's house. Lady Moira Campbell, daughter of the fourth Duke of Abercorn, and Virginia Carrington, daughter of the sixth Baron Carrington, were her roommates in a bigger Belgravia apartment that she eventually moved into after marrying Lord Ashcombe. Camilla's uncle, from 1973 until 1979, Virginia became a special assistant to Camilla and Charles in 2005, 
In her early 20s, Camilla held the positions of secretary for several West End businesses and receptionist for the Mayfair decorating firm of Sybil Colfax and John Fowler. Rumor has it that she was fired because she showed up to work late after a night on the town. During this period, Camilla frequently participated in equestrian events and maintained her enthusiasm for horseback riding. It was also alleged that she had an interest in painting and had private art lessons, but that she threw away much of her work. She also, also maintained an interest in gardening, horticulture, and fishing in her spare time. Without a shadow of a doubt, Camilla had a lively youth. This section will begin to explain when her notoriety started, though, so read on if you're interested in that. Camilla's first marriage. Camilla's first spouse was not King Charles. She has a prior marital history. She first crossed paths with Blues and Royals Guards, Lieutenant Andrew Parker Bowles, in the 60s. Simon, Camilla's younger brother, worked for their father's Mayfair wine business, and he was the one who introduced them. Their engagement was announced officially in the 1973 Times, after a romance that had its share of ups and downs. Sally Bedell Smith claims that Parker Bowles felt pressed into proposing since both families had announced the announcement without informing the pair beforehand. Sacred Heart Church at Wellington Barracks, London, was the site of the Roman Catholic wedding that took place on July the 4th, 1973. Camilla was 25 years old, and Parker Bowles was 33 years old when this happened. Belleville Sassoon, a British fashion house, designed her wedding dress, and Parker Bowles's goddaughter, Lady Emma Herbert, was one of the bridesmaids. Nearly 800 people showed up for what was widely considered the social wedding of the year. The Queen Mother, Princess Margaret, Princess Anne, and others were among the royal guests. The happy pair eventually made Wiltshire their permanent home, relocating to Middlewick House in Corsham from Bolhide Manor in Allington. Their union resulted in the births of two children, Tom on December 18, 1974, and Laura on January 1, 1978. King Charles III appointed Tom to the position of godson. While Camilla remained an Anglican, her children were brought up in the Roman Catholic religion of their father, particularly throughout the lifetime of their paternal grandmother, Anne Parker Bowles. While Laura went to a ladies' Catholic school, her wedding took place in an Anglican chapel. Tom followed in his father's footsteps by attending Eton College rather than Ampleforth College. He was also married outside of the Catholic Church. Tom is co-heir, apparent, with Parker Bowles to the Earldom of Macclesfield. The marriage did not last forever, even with these strong familial ties. Camilla and Andrew Parker Bowles began the divorce process in December 1994, after 21 years of marriage, stating that they had been living apart for many years. Rosalind, Camilla's mother, died of osteoporosis earlier that year in July. In retrospect, Camilla's father acknowledged that she had struggled throughout this period of grief. The High Court Family Division in London evaluated and granted the divorce petition in January 1995, and the processes were finally finished on March 3, 1995. Um, it. Despite Rosemary Pittman's untimely death in 2010, Andrew went on to marry her the following year. Who knows why Camilla's first divorce was so publicized? Some think the emotional estrangement she felt after her mother's death had a significant role, and those who think something else totally was at play. Reportedly, Camilla had met someone else. It was King Charles. Of course, that someone was. How did that come to pass? Continue to explore. How Camilla met Prince Charles. Camilla and Prince Charles first met in mid-1971. Before that, they were just casual acquaintances who met at social gatherings and socialized in the same social circles. They never met formally. It is commonly believed that they first met at a polo match. But according to author Giles Brandreth, they met at the home of Lucia Santa Cruz, a mutual acquaintance who introduced them. 
Their relationship became well known among friends and colleagues as their friendship developed into something more serious. They were regulars at Annabelle's, a club in Berkeley Square, and they also attended polo matches at Smith's Lawn in Windsor Great Park, where Charles played. Charles met Camilla's family at Plumpton as their relationship progressed, and he introduced Camilla to some of his relatives. But things changed when Charles left to join the Royal Navy in early 1973. The relationship ended abruptly when he left. There has been speculation about why their relationship ended. Robert Lacey suggested in his 2008 book, Royal Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, that Charles met Camilla too early and forgot to urge her to wait for him while he was in the army. According to Diana, Sarah Bradford's 2007 book, Charles's uncle Lord Mountbatten may have planned his deployment overseas to stop the relationship from progressing and arrange a marriage between Charles and his niece, Amanda Natchbull. Camilla had been in an on-again, off-again relationship with Andrew Parker Bowles since the late 1960s and, according to some sources, had little interest in marrying Charles. Some have speculated that Charles was not emotionally ready to marry until he was in his thirties. According to most royal biographers, no matter how much Charles pleaded, no one would allow him to marry Camilla. According to Patricia Natchbull, his godmother and cousin, the second Countess Mountbatten of Burma, there were those in power within the palace who thought Camilla was unfit to be a royal wife at the time. It is now clear that Charles should have married Camilla at the earliest opportunity. She had thought about it in 2005. Even if they were ideal for each other, it was illegal at the time. Charles and Camilla remained close friends despite this. Lord Mountbatten died in August 1979, seeking solace from his grief. Charles turned to Camilla Parker Bowles. The polo community and Parker Bowles's inner circle began to hear stories around that time that Charles and Camilla had rekindled their romance. In 1980, an insider who knew the pair well verified that they had rekindled their romance, but several members of the royal staff insisted that they had restarted the friendship far sooner. Since Camilla's husband, Andrew Parker Bowles, had an affair or two throughout their marriage, he was supposedly aware of it and even encouraged it. The romance was kept under wraps until the early 90s when word got out. Charles and Camilla's romance was detailed in Diana, Her True Story, published in 1992. The transcripts of a private phone call between Charles and Camilla were made public the next year, sparking the Camillagate or Tampengate controversy. The tapes were leaked to tabloid publications after they had been produced in secrecy. Camilla was the target of public scorn, and Charles's image took a major hit due to the book and the leaked tapes. Charles the Private Man, The Public Role, an interview with Jonathan Dimbleby that aired on television in 1994, candidly discussed his connection with Camilla. Camilla, he said, is a wonderful friend who has been and always will be an integral part of my life. Even though his marriage to Princess Diana had irretrievably broken down in 1986, he confessed during the interview that he and Diana had restarted their relationship. Camilla's second marriage to then Prince Charles. Clarence House announced that Camilla Parker Bowles and the Prince of Wales were engaged on the 10th February 2005. There is a square-cut diamond in the center of the ring and three baguette diamonds on each side of the ring. Given that Charles would become Supreme Governor of the Church of England in the future, the idea of marrying a divorced woman caused some controversy. Both the Queen and Tony Blair, as well as Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury, issued statements expressing their best wishes for their happiness. A civil ceremony was scheduled to take place at Windsor Castle on 8 April 2005, followed by a blessing at St. George's Chapel. The wedding had previously been scheduled to take place that day. However, there was a hitch, as Windsor Castle did not have a license to allow civil weddings. To meet the requirements of that license, the
The venue had to be accessible to anyone who wished to marry there for one year. As the royal family was reluctant to allow public weddings at Windsor Castle, the venue was moved to the town hall. The wedding took place the following day, on 9th April 2005. The following day. As far as we know, neither Camilla's nor Charles's parents were present at the event. Instead, their sons, Camilla's son Tom and Charles's son, Prince William, were present to witness the wedding. The blessing ceremony, on the other hand, was attended by both the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. After the blessing ceremony, the newlyweds were invited to stay at Windsor Castle for a reception hosted by the Queen. The ceremony featured a variety of musical performances, including performances by the Philharmonia Orchestra, the St. George's Chapel Choir, and Welsh composer Alan Howdenot to give the couple a unique wedding gift, the Mariinsky Theatre Trust from St. Petersburg arranged for Belarusian mezzo-soprano Ekaterina Semenchuk to sing a unique piece. After the ceremony and festivities were over, Charles and Camilla headed to his estate, Burke Hall, in Scotland, specifically for their honeymoon. Also, at this time, the couple was engaged in their first public engagement together. Not everyone was happy for them, even though they seemed to be enjoying their time together as newlyweds. Camilla in particular was in the spotlight during this time. The feelings people had for her were fanned by some members of the royal family, causing public tension to escalate. How did this happen, and what role did other royals play in influencing these reactions? Stay tuned. The relationship between the British royal family and Camilla. Queen Camilla's negative image stems largely from her romance with Charles, now king, and the sympathy many feel for the late Princess Diana. Since joining the royal family, Camilla faced challenges, notably her strained relationship with Princess Anne, who initially deemed her unsuitable for royal life due to her history with Charles and the dissolution of his marriage to Diana. Despite keeping her opinions mostly private, Anne reportedly harbored doubts about Camilla's capabilities, further complicated by her previous romantic ties with Camilla's ex-husband, Andrew Parker Bowles. Their connection led to a noticeable distance between the two women. Fearing it would create more family discord, Harry claimed that Camilla pushed for the marriage, causing concern about her impact on family relationships. While acknowledging the challenges in their relationship, Harry has stated he holds no negative feelings towards Camilla. So it was a bit crowded, sums up this narrative, which has fueled the perception of a rivalry between the two women. A notable confrontation occurred in 1989, where Diana confronted Camilla about the affair, revealing her feelings of betrayal and leading to a heated exchange. The affair had significant repercussions for the royal family, ultimately contributing to Charles and Diana's divorce in 1996, just a year before Diana's tragic death. Initially, Queen Elizabeth II had a strained relationship with Camilla due to her affair with Charles, but over time, their bond improved. The Queen recognized Camilla's commitment to her public duties, which helped her gain acceptance within the family. By the time of Queen Elizabeth's passing in 2022, their relationship had evolved significantly, culminating in a touching moment where King Charles and Camilla were present in the Queen's final hours. This reconciliation suggests a shift in public perception of Camilla as she gradually gained a more favorable view. The public and media perception of Camilla, due to her relationship with Prince Charles at the time of his marriage to Princess Diana, Camilla was initially viewed unfavorably by most people from the start. She faced fierce opposition from the public. The results of a survey conducted by YouGov in October 2020 showed that 43% of respondents had some opinion of her, but only 44% of them had a positive opinion of her, resulting in a net score of just 13. This unfavorable opinion was largely the result of the public's unwavering affection for Princess Diana, as well as the scandals surrounding Camilla's involvement in Charles and Diana's marriage. Camilla's nomination as Queen Consort 
was supported by Queen Elizabeth II in February 2022, marking the beginning of a shift in public opinion. A survey conducted in the same month found that the majority of British people supported Camilla's new title, while only 28% opposed it. According to a second survey published by Statista in August 2024, it was found that 49% of the UK population had a favourable perception of Camilla, while 38% had an unfavourable impression of her. To provide a point of contrast, Statista reported in early 2019 that 40% of British citizens had a favourable opinion of the Queen, while 44% still held an unfavourable opinion of her. Her extensive charity work, her devotion to the royal family, and the passage of time, which has helped to soothe public sentiment, are all factors that have contributed to this slow rise in her popularity ratings. The other factor is the passage of time. Even with all the good things going on, public perception of Camilla continues to be ambiguous. In a recent survey conducted by YouGov, it was found that 53% of respondents felt she would be successful in her role, while 18% felt the opposite. Additionally, according to a poll conducted by the Angus Reid Institute, 60% of Canadians believe that Camilla should not be called Queen. This indicates that two-thirds of Canadians do not want to accept her as Queen. During this time, Camilla's portrayal in the media has been consistent. It seems that every headline and tabloid story has focused on her alleged involvement in the dissolution of Diana's marriage. There was a lot of excitement in the press when they revealed reports of secret meetings between Charles and Camilla. These articles detailed the stress Diana was under and how their relationship eventually suffered. This quickly made Camilla one of the most unpopular people in Britain. This stress spread beyond the borders of the UK and affected people all over the world. Because Diana was so beloved, Whenever the royal family was mentioned in conversation, the affair was also mentioned, and Camilla was almost always portrayed as the villain. To this day, Camilla's reputation has not fully recovered from the public's association with the breakdown of Diana's marriage and the sadness that followed. In addition to being seen as a victim, Diana was also seen as a symbol of perseverance, which made Camilla's troubles all the more difficult to deal with. Diana showed grace in the face of adversity. Despite this, she was dedicated to charity and public service. She maintained a close relationship with the British public because she was the mother of the future king and queen. Diana's status as a mother, humanitarian, and survivor of a difficult royal marriage only increased the public's respect for her while also increasing their dislike of Camilla. These are the most recent controversies. There has been little improvement in Queen Camilla's public image due to the issues surrounding her, regardless of the number of charities or causes she has supported. For example, Camilla's royal titles when she was elevated to the position of Queen Consort have attracted renewed attention from the public and the media, which shows the extent to which people have not yet forgiven her. When Camilla married Prince Charles in 2005, it was announced that she would be known as Princess Consort after Charles ascended the throne. Due to the history of Charles and Camilla's relationship and the continued admiration for Princess Diana, this decision was made to take into account the sentiments of the general public. On the other hand, as time has passed and the general public's views have changed, the debate over Camilla's titles has grown. In February 2022, Queen Elizabeth II made it very clear that she wanted Camilla to achieve the status of Queen Consort whenever Charles ascended the throne. A significant event occurred when Camilla was allowed to assume the title of Queen Consort due to this endorsement, which demonstrated the Queen's support. However, despite the support of the royal family, the decision was met with negative reactions. Many people still strongly believe in Camilla's role in the dissolution of Charles and Diana's marriage. The announcement of Camilla's title as Queen Consort sparked 
heated debates about its appropriateness considering her past and the ongoing drama surrounding her relationship with Charles and Diana's legacy. Camilla's decision to rebrand herself as Queen Camilla ahead of King Charles III's coronation in May 2023 aimed to solidify her status within the royal family and highlight her contributions. Almost every move Camilla makes garners media attention and public reaction. A recent encounter with Brigitte Macron at the D-Day Day memorial service drew scrutiny when Camilla hesitated to shake hands, raising questions about royal protocol. Critics argued she should have embraced the moment to modernize the monarchy. Additionally, her conservative fashion choices faced backlash, with some suggesting they reflect insecurity due to her past. Despite mixed reactions, Camilla has worked diligently to improve her public image and has gradually won over some critics through her charitable efforts. She remains a strong advocate for causes like osteoporosis research and literacy while continuing to support her husband in royal duties. Undeterred by negativity, we appreciate you watching. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and leave a comment. You can also click on the video currently playing on your screen to see more interesting videos.